welcome to my channel. This year, teaching virtually, my most frequently used tool is the GoodNotes app. So today I'm sharing some tips and things that I've discovered since I started using GoodNotes for teaching. Previously, I did a little GoodNotes tutorial in conjunction with showing my digital teacher planner, so I'll have that video linked below too, but this video is more specific to how I've been using GoodNotes to teach. So the first thing is that I started a folder for all of my school stuff. So you can see that here I have my three courses, geometry, pre-calc, general geometry, and then a folder of miscellaneous things that I literally just created because I had student info in there. And so I didn't want that shown on YouTube, obviously. Now, if I click on my folders, I can go inside and I just started organizing these. So if I wanted, I can create a folder within a folder. I go to the top left corner where it says new, and then I click on where it says folder. Then it will ask me to title my folder. And so now I have a folder for my unit two things. And when I want to move things into unit two, I go into the top right corner and click on the dotted circle with the check mark inside. And then you see these little circles that show up on my different files here, and I just click on them. Okay, I have all of my unit two stuff selected. And then across the top, under where it says geometry, there is one that says move, it's the third one from the left. And when I click there, it opens up the different locations. So I'm going to put it under school, under geometry, and then into unit two. And you can see the little check mark to verify where I want it, and then I just click move. And so now all of those things have moved. A lot of the notes that you see here are PDFs that I had airdropped onto my iPad from my MacBook. And when I do the airdrop, a menu pops up asking where I want the file to go when I click good notes every time. So that's really great for any time I have notes that have already been created on the computer. I just airdrop them into good notes and then here they are and I can write on them and mark them up for my students. So one thing that I'll be talking about is portrait versus landscape. My PDFs are in portrait. So what I do is I do a pinch zoom, I pinch outward, and that way I'm able to zoom out so that the portrait PDF fills my screen. Now for this file that I was showing, it's the unit two review, and I do like a review answer key to share with students, but then we also go over it together as a class. So what I do is where the title says unit two review, there's a little arrow pointing down, and when I click there, I get all these options. And so what I do is I duplicate and then it creates a copy for me. So in this copy, it has everything that I had in the original. What I do is I go to the top right corner, those three horizontal dots. I click there and then I go to clear page. You can see it because it's highlighted in red. And when I do that, it takes away anything that I wrote. So now I have a clean copy to use with my students. That's been very helpful for having multiple classes like back to back. I can just clear the page and start over with my new class. So now I don't actually need that because that unit has been done. So I went to select, I chose that and I'm going to click the red trash button and now that's gone. And you can see up here, I could select a file and then there's the duplicate option. It's the second one from the left. And the first one from the left is the export button. So I can export this as a PDF and then I click export. And then when my options come up, I'm not going to show that because my contacts pop up. But when I click export, one of the options that comes up is to airdrop it onto my Mac, which is what I do so that I can then upload it to Google Classroom and share with students. So now that I've shown you that, I'm going to move that into the unit two file. The next thing that I wanted to show was creating a fresh blank notebook. So I'm going to go into that new section that's in the left corner and I'm going to click notebook. And you have a lot of different options here. You could have dotted paper. You could have like a grid, which is great for graphing. You could have ruled paper. I usually just go for blank lately. And the other thing that's important to share is underneath where you see create, there's a row of options. So there's the one where you could change the color of the paper. I like to keep it white. And then this option right here for the layout, you can change it between landscape and portrait. So we saw with the PDFs that they are in portrait because that's how I designed them. But when I'm presenting and sharing with my students, 
like a fresh blank notebook, I like to go with the landscape option and that's because it fills the screen. So once I have, I want it blank, I want it landscape, I'm gonna go to create and above create, it said untitled notebook. You can add a title to it if you like. And then from here, there's a whole lot that we can do. So the first thing is that when I want to share something with my students, like from a Google form, for example, I can't just pull up a Google form on my iPad. So what I do is I take a screenshot of what I want to show them from the Google form, and then I airdrop it to my iPad. And then I go to this little picture icon up here. And then my pictures that I have will pop up over here in this section. Right now I have a bunch of numbers for like a planning experiment that I'm doing. And then my most recent images pop up there. I can also get more images just by pressing on my screen and then we can see a lot more of my photo album popping up. So I'll just share an example of this. This was from Google Slides and again, I couldn't just pull up the slides and then write all over this like I wanted to. So this was an activity, I'll try to link it in the description box in case this is something that you need. This is actually from Precalculus. So once I add my image, I resize it I could also rotate it if I needed to, but I try to resize from the corner because if I resize from the side, it's gonna stretch and shrink it and then we lose how it's supposed to actually look. And if you do that by accident, the undo button is up in the top right corner. So once I get this to where I want it, I make sure to click away from it. So once I click anywhere else on the screen that's not on the picture, then all of those adjustments go away and I'm able to do whatever I need to do with the image. And now once the image is there, I can write over top of it without any issues. Whenever I want a new page in one of the notebooks, I just drag over and then I get a fresh page. If you have a PDF and you do that, like the review that I was showing before, when that happens, you actually get a duplicate page that's clean of any marks all over again. So that'd be another option instead of duplicating the entire file. I just personally like to duplicate the file so that I have like this whole clean version and I don't have any confusion about which version came from where. So a lot of what I'm teaching in class involves using the pen. So the pen, we can adjust the width. So those three options are there, but if you click and hold, you can actually change the width of the pen even more and you can make it even thicker if you wanted to. You can also change the color these are the three main colors that I use while teaching because they show up really well and they're easy to see. When you click on a color, you get a menu for pen color. I've programmed my favorite colors that I use for all of my resources. They're just my favorite, so I put them all in there. So I added custom. These are presets. You can see the toggle at the bottom of the menu. So I've changed the original presets that were here. If you go over to custom, you can change the hex code right in here. You could pick a color from here. You could even play with the color wheel and get different options. And then over on the left of that section, you can go to add to presets and so your color will be saved. If I ever decided that I wanted to go back to the original colors that come with GoodNotes, in the top left corner of the menu, there's the three lines with the little circles. I can click there and it says restore color set. If I go to the edit on the right, it just allows me to add more preset colors. The highlighters work very much the same way. I can change the width of the highlighter. I can change my colors. I can add custom colors to my presets if I wanted. So frequently during lessons, I'm toggling back and forth between these and the highlighter is nice because it will automatically highlight in a straight line for you. Being a geometry teacher, my most used feature is probably the shapes tool. So it's right next to the highlighter. You know, it's the one that has the shapes. And so what happens is when you draw something resembling a shape, it snaps to a shape automatically. So you see, if I go to make a rectangle, it kind of comes out like that. So I need to be very intentional and very careful about drawing the rectangle so it comes out like an actual rectangle and it takes a little bit of practice but you get used to it pretty quick. What I use this for the most though is drawing triangles because my triangles are kind of scary. Another tool I use frequently next to the shapes tool is the lasso tool and the lasso allows me to 
create that dotted line or curve around anything. And then I can move whatever this is around the screen. So if I wrote this in the middle of the screen and then decide I need more space, I can just lasso and move it over here. But lasso does a lot more than just move things around for you. So once I lasso something, if I click, I get a menu that pops up and I can take a screenshot. I can resize it, which will resize it nicely with that resizing tool in the corner. So I can pull it so it gets larger and it keeps the dimensions. I can also rotate it this way. With the lasso tool, I can also change the color. So if I decide it needed to be purple, I just click purple and then I've changed my color. If I decide I don't like that change, I'm just gonna hit the undo button. This year I've been doing a lot of problems that I make up off the cuff and then I have multiple classes that need them. So I draw out my diagrams, I add in my numbers, but I go through and mark everything up. Like I've added congruence marks, although this doesn't really apply here. And I've added highlights to different things. And so when I have one class, that I do this with, it's fine. But when I want to go and repeat that again with another class, I don't want to have to write everything all over again. I don't want to have to draw out the triangle and put the numbers in because I'm probably going to forget from one class to the next. So I've been making very good use of the eraser tool. Many of these tools across the top, when you click on them, you get a menu that has even more options. So just for a quick demonstration here with the eraser, Right now I have it set to a partial erase, so I can erase this and it doesn't get rid of the whole thing. But I can also change the setting to erase the entire stroke. So if I just touch this in one spot, it will erase the entire thing. And that's been very helpful like with the congruence marks because I don't want to erase the entire. Another feature I've been using is erase highlighter only. And with that, I can erase over this and it's only getting rid of the highlighter and nothing else. And that's been super helpful. If I forget to turn that off though, I get this little reminder up at the top asking me if I want to change my options. The last tool that I wanted to share about today is the laser pointer. So the laser pointer is all the way to the right in these options that we have at the top. And it does just what it says. It creates a little laser pointer so I can show my students different things that I want them to see because normally in a classroom, I would be at the smart board pointing to stuff like physically and I can't do that anymore. And you know, if I point to my screen, they can't see it because my screen's being projected. So having this laser pointer has been a lifesaver. Overall, GoodNotes has been a huge lifesaver this year. In a previous video, when I talked about making videos for my students, I mentioned that I was using Smart Notebook, and that's because that's just what I was used to using in the classroom. So there's an app that's free for Smart Notebook on the iPad, but since switching to GoodNotes, it's been so much easier to make videos and just to teach class, and I enjoy it so much more. I just remembered one more thing about the lasso, and it's kind of like the most basic thing, but you can also do a copy and then if you press down on the screen after that, you can paste. And then it's automatically set for you to resize. So you can see my not so good looking hearts there. But that's everything that I can think of that I use GoodNotes for while teaching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you have any other ways that you use GoodNotes, please share that in the comments as well for anyone else. And as always, thanks for watching.